the simplicity of the gospel. There are some people in the bank which is not greater than your God. Didn't you just read that with God, nothing shall be impossible? Did you not read that nothing is too hard for God? Why not believe that and act on it like it is really, really, really true? Let us, in Exodus chapter 14, let me give you some unusual things, some unheard of things. The children of Israel are on their way to the promised land. Pharaoh decided he'd made a mistake. I'm in Exodus chapter 14. Pharaoh decided he'd made a mistake. So he decided he was going to go and recapture the Jews and bring them back to Egyptian bondage. But the Bible says carefully that the Lord, not the devil, the Lord had led the people to a particular point. And when they got to that point, there were mountains on left and right. There was a sea in front of them. And there was a furious Pharaoh and all his army behind him. So they were hemmed in. Everybody said they were hemmed in. Do you feel hemmed in? Hemmed into a bad marriage? Hemmed into financial distress? You look around, you can't see how you're going to pay off that credit card. You can't see how you're going to pay your bills. God is a way maker. We probably sing that before we go tonight. But you'll see that these, that the Bible said they were by a place, I think, called Paiha Hira. They couldn't go anywhere, but the Bible says clearly that God had led them to that point. Maybe God didn't lead you to where you are, but you are there now. But God is your God. Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and they can't before Paiha Hira. That's what the Lord said. The Lord sent them where they were. Between Migdal and the sea over against Baal Zephon before Eishkar and camp by the sea. And Pharaoh is on his way with all his chariots. He wants, I don't know how he's going to recover three or four million persons that had just left Egypt. But God had placed them where they are. You may be in a situation now, it's a bad situation. But how do you know that God has not put you in the situation where you are? You're in a bad marriage, ready to break up. How do you know that God did not allow that? The people, the church at Pergamos, the Bible says that they dwelled where Satan's seat was. Could you imagine living in a house of Satan? But the Lord didn't tell them to try to get out of it. The Lord left them there. Read it when you go home to the church at Pergamos in the book of Revelation. The Lord left them there to be an example. People will give you trouble on the job and, and talking your name and carrying them to the boss and whatever. And you feel like you want to resign. That's not, that's not a sensible thing to do. Because you don't have any other job. You are, going, are you going to let somebody run you off the job that you already have? Every job I go in, you can't give me any trouble. If there's one that's going home, it's you. I'm the child of God. You going home, not me. I don't care how much you take my name to the boss. I don't care what you say. If there's anybody, if there's any downsizing, you going home. Y'all have to adopt that attitude. So God placed them where they were. And then... As Pharaoh was coming, Moses cried out to God. And that's what you're doing. You've been crying to God about the same thing for the last year, the last two years, the last 10 years, the last 25 years. But we're going to look at that verse where the Lord says, Moses, what are you talking to me for? That's a strange thing to say to the pastor. The enemy is coming. There's going to be a massacre. Huh? And he gets on his knees. And he's crying out to the Lord. Haven't you cried long enough? How many times do you have to cry for the Lord to hear? Are you not going to reach out and take your possession? Are you not going to reach out by faith and take what is yours? Are you going to cry to the Lord and pray about the same thing over and over and over and over? Look. And the Lord said unto Moses, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Go forward where? Lord, that's the right see there. How are we going to go forward, Lord? How are we going to do? Listen, God never speaks out of turn. So when you have false prophets that say they make mistakes, you know they're liars and they're false as a $3 bill. When I made a mistake, no, 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 God doesn't make mistakes. When he's pre when, I mean, can you show me one in the Bible where God spoke to a prophet and the prophet made a mistake? If you're hearing from God, you're not going to make any mistake. So the Lord sent them right there. And now the Lord is saying, go forward. Maybe that's what the Lord is saying to you. 
You're crying. You're praying. You want the church to have all night prayer meeting for you and all kinds of stuff. But you do nothing other than give trouble. Sorry, not give trouble, but um, make yourself difficult. That's nicer. That's a nicer way to put it. Huh? What do you do? Watch television all day long? Spend your time on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all that? When the Bible said you ought to be praying without ceasing? What are you putting into this miracle? It's just like a marriage. Both the husband got to bring something to the table and the wife got to bring something to the table. And when one brings everything and the other one brings nothing, that marriage doesn't work. But that's for another time. The Lord said to Moses, Moses, Bajan, Bajan, Bajan. What are you talking to me for? What are you talking to me for? Huh? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Let me continue to read here verbatim so you'll get the, the essence of what is happening here with this miracle. Uh, the next verse, verse 15. But you, Moses, you lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. The Lord gave the instruction before he gave the, the answer as to what's going to happen. Huh? So if Moses doesn't act, this sea is not going to get divided. So God has given you some instructions a long time ago. God has given you some instructions for your healing. God has given you some instructions for your marriage. Husbands life and wife will be not bitter against them. Wives be in subjection to your own husbands and all that. God has given the instructions. And unless and until you begin to follow those instructions, God does not give a revelation until you follow the written instruction. If you're not following the written instruction, you're expecting God to give you supernatural revelation. It ain't going to happen. You have to follow this first. You got to follow the written word first before you get this supernatural revelation. And don't forget, we have evidence in the Bible, a lot of evidence of supernatural revelations that did not come from God. Although it was seen as though the things work. Like when Janice and Jambres threw down their rod and it became a snake. That wasn't from God. So the words that you may hear in your ears may sound like they're from God. But not necessarily so. But as we go through this, you'll find that as Moses followed the instruction and obeyed the word of God, the Lord parted the Red Sea and Israel went through. Isn't that unheard of? Have you ever heard about that before or after? The Lord wants to do something supernatural in your life. God wants to do something unusual, something uncommon, something unheard of, something unprecedented, something unlikely, something unknown. God wants to do that in your life. You can't pray all the time. I know that's what you come up with. I know the average church does that all the time. How many pastors these days really read the Bible and study? So you do things that God doesn't want you to do. That's an unusual thing. God wants to do that for you. I want to hear somebody coming on Thursday night. And tell us about something unusual. Let me use, forget the word unusual right now. Use the word weird. That's weird. Joe Austin was driving on the highway. He lost control of his car. And he was heading under a truck. With a 40 foot container at the back. And all of a sudden, he felt like a wind um, blew him off the, off the highway. That wind blew him to safety. Otherwise, people are still wondering, you're still alive? I think the driver of the truck actually told him, somebody looking out for you. Somebody, yes, somebody's looking out for you. Expect these unusual things. I've had unusual things in my life all the time in case in times of getting jobs, in time of getting land, in case of getting a house. God has always done unusual. It's just that we are ungrateful and we're waiting for blind eyes to open. But the small things that God will do for us, we don't come back and say thank you. We can talk about Thanksgiving sometime because Thanksgiving is so important. So we're looking and we're saying, if God did it for them, so God can open the door for you. This way, you read this particular one. Look at this again. Verse 16. But lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. You see, you have to do something. 
and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. That's the instruction of the Lord. What's the instruction the Lord has given to you? What's the instruction? Let's go into the New Testament to see something because you might not have enough money to feed the children. In Mark chapter 6, being at verse 35, God is going to feed 5,000 men. And wherever you find 5,000 men, there are 10,000 women. And the women don't leave the children at home, so you can have another 5,000 children. So this miracle could be a miracle of 20,000 being fed. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far past. It's coming to evening. Verse 36. Send the people away, that they may go into the country round about, and into the, village, into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. Is that like you? You have nothing to eat? Hold on. Send them away. Verse 37, go tell us this. Jesus answered and said unto them, give ye them to eat. There are times where you have to put the scalpel in the hand of the new doctor. The old doctors can't always be doing something. When is the new doctor going to take over? So the new doctor has to be trained. That's why you see I pushed Pastor Chantel into doing so much. This morning she looked after the baby for the first time for herself. I take her to funerals. Maybe she take her to a wedding. Give her a chance to the public Sunday morning. So many people came to me and said, Pastor, you should not give away your Sunday morning. It's your Sunday morning uh, 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 time because when new people come, they come to hear you. Who I am, they come to hear God, not me. There comes a time when you got to put the controls of the, in the pilot's hand. He just graduated a year ago, but you got to put the controls in his hand. Otherwise, when are you going to learn? Are you with me? So look what Jesus is doing here. Let me see how you're going to handle this, fellas. You give them something to eat. It's a pity when people don't listen. I nearly knocked on board, but I'm going to knock on board. But Pastor Chantel listens. And if she continues to listen, she will go far. But some people you can't talk to. Does she agree with me everything? I don't believe so. She's not stupid. I come up with some weird things sometimes. But you know, the Bible said that if we are not like-minded and we are fighting at the top, you know, Psalm 133 says, the anointing flows down from Aaron's beard down to the hem of his garment. There are some scholars who believe that that speaks of the anointing flowing from the platform down to the pew. Some scholars think that. But if you told us up here fighting, you think anointing of, we think of flow down? Huh? And you know something? There is blessing in impartation. Just like when Jesus went to top the mount. His glory was imparted unto the other fellows, unto Moses, so that when Moses came down, his face was shining with the glory of God. Impartation by association. And you got to understand that that impartation could be negative or positive. That was a positive impartation when the glory of God came to Moses' face. But you could associate with people where there's a negative impartation. And you'll notice that you'll begin to speak like them. You'll begin to think like them. I've been studying that quite recently. There's something called peering in the demonic world. Peering, you know, peer. The, the devil links you up to somebody. Links you up to somebody. It happens with churches. It happens with friends. you got to be careful who you are peered with. you got to make sure that that person is not a bad influence. That's why the Lord said there are some persons that you should stay away from. Some people prefer to go to hell than to give up the friend that keep leading them in the wrong direction. Peering. Go to your computer and begin to study that. Peering. I don't want to be peered in anybody. I suppose that might be, but might be a, a new word they're using for soul ties and things like that. Soul ties can be good, like David and Jonathan. The Bible said that David and John, David loved Jonathan just like a man will love his wife. They were really, really friends. But then there could also be a bad pairing like Samson and Delilah. So you got to be careful who you join up with. Anyhow, that's for another time. He answered and said, give them to eat. I'm training you. There's a difference between training and teaching. Teaching is what I'm doing now. But training... Is when you put your hands on and start 
you know, uh, it's like a mother te teaching her daughter to cook or son. There comes a time when you got to go sit down and leave them there even if they burn the water. That's training. Training is the actual physical work. You with me? And they said unto him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give to eat? Next verse. So Jesus said unto them, how many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said, five loaves and two fishes. Oh boy. If this wasn't a miracle for me, I don't know what. But I always remember this when it comes to this text. Man, my wife got married in 1975. It was not even a year yet that we were together. And I got home and my wife, we didn't have any children. And she's cooking and this woman cooked food in a little teapot. You know them little small, small saucepans? That I burned one in, in, um, last week in the kitchen. And there, if you go and see it, now it's all black. Because I was doing my work and I forgot that I had tea on on the stove. And I went home, you know, what, what, what is you cooking? You, you cooking that for a big man? That, that, that little pot? What, what, what do you think that is? She must have been hurt or whatever. I don't know, but she's strong. She doesn't say anything. But you'd be surprised to know how far that little race went. God was really, I never did it before. Uh, since then, God was really, God is able to multiply. That's the point I'm trying to make. By the way, you got to understand that preachers, when they preach, they should always say something that you would remember so that their message will not be the same as everybody's message. So if you come to a funeral, you're going to hear me talking about the old men giving the women the money that they should buy diapers with. Because people in front of me went to so many funerals, they're going to remember mine. Oh, the pastor, they talk about the diapers. So we always got to give you something that is unusual, uncommon, out of the way. It might make you laugh. It might make you angry. But it separates your sermon from the other person's sermon. Are, are you with me? So you remember the day that I talked to my wife in a, in a rough way about the little bit of food. Well, she's cheap in the cooking food. So, I mean, but I didn't know that at that time because we just got married. She, she doesn't waste, waste food and things like that. But you remember that, that God is a God that provides. So he made them to sit down. I want to read this in full. Or as the lad who was say in total. I want to read the full thing. He commanded them to sit down by companies upon the green grass. So people are sitting down. There's some order. Okay. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. I don't know why they did that. And I'm not going to speculate. But there were hundreds here. There were fifties there. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes. Now there's some key things in this verse. When he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes. He looked up to heaven. You look at popular. You, you got it at a reduced price. You look at pretty smart. You got the bread 10 for $3.80. Why not look up to heaven? Huh? He looked up to heaven and he blessed. Are you thankful for it? For the little that you have? I hear people saying, and they cringe when they hear them saying this. Every Sunday, God eat chicken. A third with the chicken now. When Israel did that, thousands of them died. They said, we turned on this manna. Manna was angels' food that came down from heaven every day. I'm sure that it was well constituted and it was good for their body. They said, we hate this food that you sent in down for us. Wish that we had some meat. The Lord said, oh yeah, you want meat? The Lord caused quails. Some that looked to me like ducks. The Lord caused them to fly in. In the land. And God caused them to fly so low. That you didn't have to get a, get a perk to get them down. You were able to reach up your hand and catch these quails. They reached up their hands. They caught, they caught the quails. And they ate the quails. And the Bible said that while the quail was still in their mouth. God slew thousands of them. Why? And we, we say the same thing. Every Sunday rice. Every Sunday uh, uh, chicken. And there are people around the world that can't even get a chicken stepper to eat. Uh, huh? And you're complaining that every Sunday, stop it, because God is listening. God is listening. If you don't want to eat the chicken, leave it. You got a fridge? When he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven, he blessed, he broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them. Five loaves and two fishes. Let's continue. And they did all eat, listen to this, 
and were filled. Now, people who try to discard this miracle say that the bread, he only gave them a little pinch, as much as you could put in a thimble. But that makes the miracle even greater. Because if the Lord would pinch off some bread and pinch off some fish, fish, and put it in a thimble and give you, and you were filled, a big man, you can understand how, how great that miracle was. It's just like they said that the Lord did not part the Red Sea. You know, people say that. But Israel went over on dry ground, and they said, that was only about six inches of water that they went through. And the miracle is then that the Egyptians who came before, came after, sorry, they had drawn in the same six inches. Well, you can't drown a baby in six inches of water. You can drown a whole army in six inches of water. So when people try to, to diss God and things like that, they, they don't look, look this thing through. They did all eat, and the last three words are important. They were filled. No, I'm, I'm going down because we want to see how many people were filled. We noticed so far there's five barley loaves and two fishes. So you don't have any money. You don't have money to send the children to school. You don't have money to buy uniforms for them to go back into school. You don't have, you don't have, you don't have. And all you can see is you don't have, you don't have. They took up 12 baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. 12 baskets full. They started with five barley loaves. I'm belaboring this point because I don't know how many of us in this place have enough. So we're looking to God who is more than enough and who's able to supply our needs. And we're looking to him to do it supernaturally. We're looking for him to do it in an uncommon way. So that when it is done for you, you'll come back right here in front of the church and say, you would not believe this. I remember 30 years ago, I lent a woman $5,000. She absconded. She left Barbados. She went up to the States and she lived there for the last three years. But you know, I met her last week. She had just come back and she said, I was so ashamed, but then gave you $5,000. Come and go down to the bank with me now and give you the $5,000. You think that's possible? With God, nothing shall be impossible the bible says in one of the psalms that the children of israel limited the holy one of israel we think that we can't limit god because he's almighty he's all powerful no we can limit him i'm going to show you that scripture it's psalm 140 well i can't remember but the bible says you're going to see it yes look it's right here psalm 78 41 the children of israel turned back and tempted God and limited the whole one of it. How could we limit Almighty God? He's Almighty. He's all powerful. We can limit Him in a number of ways. We can limit Him in a number of ways. When you were not here last time, we were speaking about the fact that people in church are weak and sickly, and some even die because they live as they like, and then they come to the communion table and partake of the Holy Communion. And Paul said, That is why some are weak and sickly among you, and some even die. I hope that we've tried to make amends. I hope that we have. But we could limit God. Why don't you take the limits off God? Why don't you take God out of the box that you have him in? Let's go back to that passage with the, uh, with, with the, with the feeding of the 5,000 in Mark chapter 5. Because I want to get into the verse where it says that beside the 5,000 men, there were also children. So, but anyhow, we don't even have to go there because if you could use two salt, two loads of salt, right? But some people also said, it's amazing when people don't love God in this word. Some people also said that those loaves were very, very, very big. So who is going to, this mother is sending this boy to a crusade to hear Jesus preach. Which mother is going to give him a bread as big as a concrete block? Huh? He was a boy that went out to a crusade. He got two, two salt bread and two fish cake. That's all it was. It was no big, huge bread. But 12 baskets full were left over. And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. You think that this was 
a crusade for men only? Wherever you see 5,000 men, you're going to find 10,000 women. Look in here tonight. Look at the ratio of men to women. Huh? If we have seven men in here tonight, we have a lot. Look at the monk of women. So that five barley loaves and two small fishes fed about 20,000 persons. You don't have enough of something. A woman that had enough, uh, enough, she only had a little bit of meal and some oil. She made, uh, she made a, 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 a cake for the man of God first and that multiplied. There was another woman who just had a little bit of oil. She borrowed some vessels, a lot of vessels. The man of God said to her, pour in, pour in. And she poured and she poured and she poured. And that day, that woman became an entrepreneur because the man of God said to her, go sell what you have and pay your bill. So she was in the oil business from that day. God could put you on some kind of business. You are not to be home saying that you don't have any job and you, don't, you can't work. You don't have to work for somebody. You can work for yourself. That woman started to work for herself. She started, I believe she started to sell oil. And as a result of that, I believe it expanded. So I was going to tell you some more. I was going to tell you about Jesus walking on the water because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I was going to tell you about Jesus calming the storms. And you have storms and you're in a man. In your heart, you have storms in the house, you have storms in the marriage, you have storms in the business, you have storms everywhere. Jesus, the Jesus that I know in Matthew chapter 8, this Jesus can still your storms. Brother, we have all that we need. All you've got to do is exercise your faith. You've got to open your mouth and say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. you got to open your mouth and say, by his stripes, I am healed. you got to verbalize it. The Bible said in Mark chapter 11, I think it is, that you will have whatsoever you say. Look, Jesus, God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they were a wrong for all eternity. They were a wrong before the creation of anything. But nothing was created until Jesus used words. After being here for all eternity, Nothing, nothing, nothing was created until Jesus used words. And you heard Genesis chapter 1, let there be light. You have got to use words. Don't become so sophisticated that you don't use words. They could be loud, they can be soft, but don't talk in your heart. Use words. Let me give you the opportunity to do that now. Let's all stand. The simplicity of the gospel.